What can you tell us? Did WWE pivot or was this the plan all along? Come on, give us something. Let, let me spill the tea. Uh- <laughs> I'm a champion! Natalia, welcome back to Gorilla Position. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. I'm actually in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and um, I'm... I'm great. I'm just getting ready to head to the WWE fan experience. It's 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 a big thing here that like it's like nothing anybody's ever seen before with WWE. It's like a an amusement park meets <laughs> <laughs> WWE show. So it's it's going to be really cool, but I've never seen it and they've been hyping it up. So it's going to be really fun. It does look awesome. I, it looks really good. I saw some of the uh, the teaser videos that Triple H posted earlier. As you say, a kind of amusement park come physical Hall of Fame. I feel like it's the kind of attraction that fans have been clambering for for years. Um, certain fans will be disappointed it's in Saudi. Um, are there any uh, rumblings of other locations for these physical experiences? You know, North America, maybe the UK. Have you heard any rumors? I'm hearing rumblings that we're going to bring this to a lot of different places. Of course, I can't, you know, like I'm not 100% sure, but I, I, from what I'm hearing, they they want to do this elsewhere. I think with WWE being so global right now, I mean, we're we're the biggest that we've ever been and we're expanding globally more than we ever have before. So I think you'll definitely see something like this down the line in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in I mean, in Japan and Australia, I I would love to see it in so many different places around the world because some of our biggest fan bases are outside of the United States. So Mm -hmm. we're we're growing so exponentially and it's just like a really exciting time for the company more than ever before. Absolutely. It really is. Um, And how are things going for you in, in WWE? Because you started in the developmental system in 2007, right? So 17 years ago. Um, what an incredible run you've had with the company. I remember last time we chatted, you were a bit frustrated and you were saying you felt like you had so much more to give and you said you were worthy of these kind of main event, high profile runs with with other big talents. Um, now a few years have passed, do you still feel that way or are you more content with the role you're playing both in front of and behind the camera? I I would love to do more in the company. I've been fighting for more my entire career, to be perfectly honest. There's still so much more that I'd love to do. And I think about, you know, um, like I'm still young enough to be able to do all the things that I want to do. I know that like when we get opportunities, we we have to nail those performances. And I feel like every time I've gotten an opportunity to 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 have, for example, a championship match like I did last year with Rhea Ripley um, on Raw, I felt extremely proud of that match. We did really great ratings with it, and it was just very, very well received. I remember feeling so happy with that and being like, every time I'm given an opportunity, I have to nail it because I want to be able to prove to the people that make the decisions about my career that I can go, that I can hang, and I absolutely do want more. I, I've always wanted more, and I still want more today. I, 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 the thing is, and I stand by this, there's, there's only so much control that I have though, because I'm not, I, I work for, I'm, it's a television show. WWE is a TV show. So while I may want to be the lead actress in the show, I have to keep fighting for that. And it's just like any of us, Becky Lynch has to fight for it. Rhea Ripley has to fight for it. We all, we all have to keep fighting for it. And it's so competitive right now. And I think the company has looked at me as a stable, steady foundation for so many different reasons. But for me, like, it's okay to want more and it's okay to go, Hey, sometimes I want to be the bride. I don't mind being the bridesmaid, but sometimes I want to be the bride. And so I'm confident that 2024 is actually going to be a huge year of growth for me. Um, for, for so many different reasons, I'm working on so many different projects right now that are really exciting and I'm like over the moon about them, but I'm excited to grow. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is that I've never stopped wanting more and I've never stopped fighting for more and I've never stopped working for more. I am, I mean, if I'm not in my ring working, I'm, I'm, I'm putting on the best performances that I can within the parameters that I'm given, but, but I can only control so much. So as much as I want to <laughs> be the women's champion, I don't always, it's not always in my hands. And do you, do you still get nervous? Cause you know, we, we talked about you being a, a veteran of the game. Um, 
you know, you, you mentioned the the opportunities and like the title match against Rhea uh, on, on Raw. When these opportunities are presented to you, do you feel a lot of pressure on your shoulders? When I think about those great moments in my career, and there's been some really incredible ones that I felt like I took the ball and ran with it every time. Um, like the first ever women's table match, the match I have with Charlotte Flair at the very first takeover, um, being an iron woman in the the second women's Royal rumble for over 55 minutes, the, um, the being part of the first ever women's money in the bank match. Uh, and then of course, like I said, the match with Rhea Ripley, just being able to do, you know, do so much with, uh, I've had some great moments and every moment I've been extremely nervous. I, honestly love being nervous before I wrestle. If I, if I'm not nervous, I feel like there's a problem because I, I I thrive on that energy. And I feel like the second that I'm not nervous is when I don't love it anymore. And I don't want to be there. I think, I think there's something about nerves in a, in a good way. If you can channel them properly, I think there's something to be said about them keeping you safe. Adrenaline is really, really important for performers. And I know like when we didn't have fans during the pandemic, it did scare me sometimes because I was, I love being nervous before I walk out in front of a packed stadium or a packed arena or, a, you know, having thousands of people screaming. But when you don't have anybody screaming and there's complete silence, it was almost eerie wrestling with nobody. And we, we worked through that luckily, but it, I always get nervous and, and I love it. Yeah, nice. Well, the fans are back in a big way and we know the fans are going to descend on Philadelphia for WrestleMania 40. Um, what a road to WrestleMania it's already been. Absolutely crazy situation with with Cody and The Rock and Seth and Roman. Um, can you give us any insight? Was this always the plan? Because Cody stepped aside for The Rock and then he said, actually, at the WrestleMania kickoff event, I choose you, Roman, and he took that match what can you tell us? Did WWE pivot or was this the plan all along? Come on, give us something. I Let, let me spill the tea. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I think the, our fans, our WWE fans, honestly, have like they do have a voice. And whether it's on social media, whether it's, you know, what, what, whether they tune in to watch our product, they have a voice. And there was such a, to me, the way that I look at it, and I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm not... Um, our fans spoke up and said, we want Cody and Cody deserves this. And Cody's been fighting for this since, you know, we all go back for me. When I think about Cody working through that torn peck, I think of, I visualize what it was like for him to wrestle where he almost had, you know, his arm was just like, like you could yeah. see what kind of pain, what pain he was in. He fought so hard to come back and to finish his story. Um, to me, he, Cody has been working hard for it and he's deserved it. So I think, there was this moment where it was like, okay, it's, you know, it's going to be, like I said, in WWE, we only sometimes as talent, we only have so much power when it was decided, okay, it's going to be rock versus Roman. When the fans spoke up and they showed such an outcry for Cody, I think it made it really exciting. It honestly, it honestly made Cody into the biggest baby face in the company. And the, what we're, what we're seeing with the rock right now, it's, the rock to me just is I want to watch and see what happens. I want to see every single thing that happens. And that's the power of, of the rock is that he can pivot on the drop of a dime and make this so exciting. And he has now with his alliance with Roman, him talking about the, the their family and what this means. And it's just like, this is a rock that we've never seen before. And I think honestly, this is my favorite version of the rock. It's exciting. I, it's fun. It's this to me. It's I have goosebumps talking about how excited I am. Do you know what? I was literally just about to say to you, you saying that has given me goosebumps. So it's clearly very exciting. To me, it's exciting and I'm I'm here for the ride. And it just shows you how brilliant The Rock is to be able to kind of like maneuver this. But Cody will come out of this whole thing, I think, better than ever. And I just, I, our fans do have a voice and their voice matters and it shows. And I love that. Well, no matter what way it goes, I'm sure it's going to be incredibly special. Um, speaking of WrestleMania, speaking of WrestleMania moments, you being a veteran of the game, you've obviously grown up in and around the business. Um, do you have any specific WrestleMania moments that stand out to you from over the years that you've experienced in person, whether it was backstage, in the stands, in the ring? Um, what really sticks out for you in terms of WrestleMania moments? Oh, I... Oh, there's been so many moments that for me that 
I've been, a, well, you know, I have a, I have a Guinness World Record for being a part of the most WrestleMania matches of any woman in WWE history. So I've been a part of a few really yeah, cool. Congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Um, I, the moment that to me, like, I, I'll never forget it was when I, I got to see Tamina Snuka get her flowers in a match in, in 2020. I'm sorry, it was 2021. It was the year after the pandemic. And I remember fighting very, very hard for Tamina and I to be a tag team because I felt like we don't, I, to me, I, and I'm not saying by any means that Tamina's retiring, but I just felt like she'd been in WWE for so long and she hadn't really gotten her flowers. She had never won a women's championship. And so I made it like my mission to see what I could, like what we could do together as two strong forces from her being from the Samoan dynasty and me being from like the Hart dynasty, these two incredibly powerful wrestling families um, coming together as women representing our families. And I came up with this idea, like I said, I want to be a tag team with you. And I fought for it. I fought for it with everything I had and I wouldn't take no for an answer. I was like, we have to do this. And I want to like, my mission was to help Tamina get gold and to see it come to life and to see what like we had been fighting for together and to see Tamina really believe in herself. And then to see her in that match against Shayna and Nia Jax um, on night two, even though we didn't win the match, it didn't matter. There was a, a stadium full of people chanting Tamina's name. And again, yeah. it goes back to it goes back to our fans having a voice and rallying behind somebody that they feel deserves it. And when we really could see what Tamina could do if she was given a chance, if she was just given a chance to like have a little bit of a spotlight, they that to me was so powerful. And I remember The Rock um he sent us both a video message before we walked out on stage and before for that match. He said, hey, girls, like he filmed this beautiful message and he said, I want you guys to like take this in. He's like, just when you walk out through that curtain, look around and look at the fans and look at the like, just take a minute. Don't just take a minute to like really understand like what our families went through to get there to get you girls here and he goes just just soak it up because you girls are representing the women of our families and never take that for granted i don't want that to ever be lost on you and it always like meant so much to me that he sent that message and tamina just had like tears she cried for like days after that match of happiness because she had never gotten that chance to shine so that's honestly one of my favorite wrestlemania moments it's an, it's an obscure little moment that probably not very many people think of but when you watch another woman or another person but for me in this case it was a woman when you watch another woman so deserving get finally get her flowers it, it was just to me like it was so incredibly meaningful well do you know what? i really appreciate you telling me that story because i think us as fans we can often sit back and and be like oh is this person going to get a spot at wrestlemania is that person going to get a spot at wrestlemania but actually learning firsthand from the talents what those spots mean is uh is you know is really quite special um speaking of special i've got to talk to you about the heart family your incredible family i was lucky enough to go to the uk premiere of uh, the iron claw recently the the film about the uh the von erics and their their tragic story um but surely there is a story and a film to be made about the hearts. Is that something you're having any discussions about? Is that something in the works? Is that something you'd like to get off the ground? Something I can help you with? <laughs> um, I I saw The Iron Claw too. And it's funny because after I watched that movie, I texted, I, I sent Brett a text and I said, you know, Brett, this movie's really, he hadn't seen it at this point. And I said, this movie is awesome. I, I, I loved it. And Brett said, um, he's like, you know, the Von Erich family actually got into professional wrestling through our family because my grandfather met Fritz Von Erich in Edmonton and he was trying out or doing something with the Edmonton Eskimos. And my grandfather saw him and he's like, you're a big guy that you should get into professional wrestling. So the Von Erich family actually moved onto the property at the Hart House and my grandfather broke in Fritz Von Erich into the business. Wow. And I just, and I just, to me, that was so powerful. I loved, I loved the Iron Claw. I thought it was really beautifully done. Um, I thought Chavo Guerrero did an incredible job as far as the teaching people that had never done this before. Just goes to show you what an incredible coach he is, uh, another third generation um, wrestler. But, but for me, um, I think there is huge potential in telling a story about, you know, my family, whether it's, it, 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 there's lots of ways that you could go with it. I mean, our family is so big. It, it's so, there's so much meat on the bone. Um, even just 
even just the story about me as a, as a woman growing up in this, in this crazy world and kind of seeing it through my eyes, you could, you could tell a whole story on the heart foundation. You could tell one on the entire family. You could talk about, you could tell a whole story on the life and times of Sue Hart. My grandfather actually was a homeless boy, grew up in a tent um, in the Saskatchewan wilderness. And one of the ways that he stayed, stayed alive during the winters was he joined the YMCA and uh, started wrestling there just so he didn't didn't freeze to death. That's how important wrestling is to my family. So when you think about the meat on the bone, there's so much so much meat on the bone as far as how many stories could be told about the Hart family. But I am working on something that is very um, close to my heart, and it's something that I'm 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 really. There's a few things I'm working on that I'm really excited about, and you just you just never know. Um, I, I, I think that 2024 though is going to be a huge year of, of growth for me. And I'm really excited about just being able to grow. I really feel like that's something I need to do and I'm going to be able to do it this year. So I'm excited. Now, I hope you don't mind me asking about this, but I, I feel like, you know, it's not nice at all, but it's too big to be ignored. Um, Vince McMahon and all the allegations and the lawsuit that's come out, um, a, a horrible period um, and a horrible situation. But what's the feeling like backstage now WWE are sort of trying to enter this new phase? I think for especially being in the heart of the women's locker room and being like, you know, I, I feel like I have a good pulse on the girls and like my, my relationships with the girls are all really strong. For me, the biggest focus is inclusion for the women and making sure that the women in WWE right now shine brighter than we ever have before. I think that's the most important takeaway for me at this moment is that all we can do is just move forward. And, you know, it's hard to not see everything on, you see, I mean, you have to be living under a rock if you haven't, you know, for, for me, like, it's you you see this and you see that it's so much to process and it's so much to absorb but when i think about what grounds me it's my relationships with the girls in the locker room how we can stay positive for each other how we can be supportive of each other just being there to talk to each other work through feelings because something like this just hits everybody differently you never know about what people have gone through in their childhood or what people have gone through in general so it's a very to me it's a time of being very empathetic and just being there for each other, especially in our women's locker room. I want to see, I want to see the women shine brighter than ever before. I want to see the women um, just do great things this year. We've got a women's division in WWE. That's the best it's ever been with new additions like Jade Cargill and Tiffany Stratton on the main roster. And I mean, even when I watch NXT, I'm just blown away by the level of talent and women that are coming up and that we're going to get a chance to work with. There's so many talented women on Raw and, and SmackDown and NXT and the girls that are training. To me, the best thing we can do is give women as many opportunities as we can to shine right now and for women to feel included, safe, and and welcome, and, and welcome to shine, and to know that we have a voice in WWE, to know that we can turn to people within the company and say, hey, this is what I'm feeling, and to not feel afraid. I think that's extremely important, and I, I feel like right now the girls are all just focusing on WrestleMania. I want to, I would love to see lots of women included in this year's WrestleMania and celebrating a great year because to me, when I look at WrestleMania, it's like the women that have worked so hard all year long, I want them to be included in that show. And I know not everybody can be included, but I would love to see lots of women represented this year at WrestleMania. I would love to see the women shine at Elimination Chamber. I can't wait to see what the women are going to do tonight on SmackDown. I want to see the girls really take the WWE by storm this year and just focus all of this into a positive for, for us in the locker room. Well said. Well said, Natty. Thank you so much for that. Um, finally, finish your story. It's a phrase being banded about on uh, WWE TV a lot. It's the slogan for the new video game, WWE 2K24, proud sponsors of GP. Um, but what does the phrase mean to you? What does finish your story mean to Natty? If you could write the final chapter of your career, how does that go? Well, my best days have never happened. They haven't happened yet. My best matches haven't happened yet. My best moments haven't happened yet. And I feel like um, very much, it's funny because Bret Hart said that he never really hit his prime until he was 40. And I feel like there's just so much more to do and so many more stories to be told. 
And for me, I would love to win another championship in WWE. And I would love to do more. There's just so much more that I want to do. But the most important thing that any of us can do, no matter what level you're at in WWE, whether you're a beginner at NXT, whether you're on the main roster, whether you've been here for a couple of years, whether you've been here for an unprecedented 17 years like myself, the biggest and most important thing that any of us women can do in the division is to continue to want to give back because you always get what you give. And I feel like if every girl focuses on giving back, they'll get 10 times more personally. So we keep building the foundation. We keep building our women's division and we'll have a women's division that's thriving so that you never know. Maybe one day there will be an entire show dedicated to women in the WWE. Love that. Natty, thank you so much for your time. It's so lovely to see you again and can't wait to see you in person uh, very soon. I am so excited to see you again too. And um, thank you for just thank you for giving me this time. I appreciate it so much, James. I'm a champion!